All right. All right, so this thing is called the Adafruit Soundboard. Uh, there's several different models. We got the uh, least expensive version, meaning it's got two megabytes of, of uh, storage on it. You can store audio um, sound files on it. Uh, you can store either WAV or OGG files. OGG is like the open source version of MP3. Uh, there's all kinds of MP3 to OGG converters available online. Uh, the way it works is uh, you power it up. You can either power it up via USB or using the uh, 3 to 5 volt input on these pins. Uh, and then you connect these other numbered pins to triggers, like buttons. So you can also connect it to your Arduino. So when uh, you close a specific circuit, then it will play this sound. You also need to connect it to some speakers. So you'll see that there are line outs on this. Uh, it, this is the unamplified version, so we're also going to need to add an amplifier. I've got this amplifier for you that, that you'll use as well. You can get the amplified version. I probably should have gotten you that one for simplicity's sake, but uh, you basically just load those files onto this using the USB cord, and uh, depending on how you name the files, the triggers will act differently. So there's one way you can name the file so that you press the button once and it'll play the entire song. Another way you can name the file so you hold the button down and as long as the button's held, it'll play that, that uh, sound file. Uh, and then there's, uh, there's random buttons as well. You just go into the documentation to figure out how you go about naming these files. Uh, this one requires soldering in order to get it to work. So it comes with these pins. And uh, you basically, it, it comes with this, this set of pins, and these pins don't fit in here. There's too many pins. So you're gonna have to count off how many you want. So I just counted it off here. And then if you break it here, oh, I didn't break enough. I'm just gonna break one more. And now you'll see, you wanna come in a little closer so you can see this. Uh, you'll see that these fit in right here and they also match up to a breadboard. So you'll be able to sit this right on top of your breadboard and wire it up. But you need to solder these pins onto the board in order for this to work. So I wanna demonstrate that. Uh, you'll see we get the soldering iron set to 750 degrees. Uh, that's because we're using non-lead solder. It's gotta be hot. I'm gonna put on my safety goggles. All right, and I think I pulled out a piece of solder. Do you see it? There it is. And I'm gonna do one side and I'll let you guys do the other side. But basically what we wanna do is create a little bit of solder that will connect these pins to those little rings. Now last time I demonstrated soldering to you, it was just two wires, which you can really get wires as hot as you want and it's not gonna do any damage. But when we're dealing with circuitry, we want these little rings to get hot enough to melt the solder. But if we hold that iron on there for a minute, then we're gonna just get this whole board hot and we can fry it. So here we have to be a little, little smarter and faster and more precise. So really you only wanna hold it on there for two seconds max. Uh, otherwise you start distributing that heat into these really sensitive components. Okay, so here's our iron. Notice that it's got that dull look to it so we need to tin the iron using a little bit of solder. Oh, it's a little shinier now, but I'm just gonna melt this solder on there. Now there's a little bit of solder on the tip. And if I put it in here, let's see if that's shiny. Luke, can you see that it's shiny on the screen? Yes. Okay, great. So now I'm gonna go through here and wire a, a, a solder up these pins, realizing that I'm dealing with a lot of heat I know about my surroundings. I'm using my dominant hand. I'm left-handed. You're probably going to use, well, you're right-handed. You're, if you're right-handed, you're going to use your right hand on the hot iron. And now I want to sandwich the, the uh, pin between the solder and the iron. I'm going to start here. I can leave this here as long as I want. It's, I just don't want the, the iron to be on there for more than a couple seconds. So there, now let's transfer the heat. Mm. 
gift after. <laughs> there. If you can, if you can zoom in, can you see that there's like a little peak on that pin? Like it's the this pin right now is uh, surrounded by cooled solder, and now we've got like a, a solid connection. I'm going to try it again on the zero. There. Uh, it should be relatively cool. There's a little, on this one, there's a little gap. So I can fix it by just touching it again. There. And now you can see the solder is all the way around that zero pin. Zero is one of the trigger pins that you'll use to, uh, to wire this thing up. Let me do another one. I'll do one and then I'll let you guys try it. Um, notice that I'm putting the heat away from all the circuitry. I don't know if that's better, but I assume it is. There, I you know, stumbled a little bit. If you can rest your wrist on something, then you get a little steadier hand. There we go. There. Take a look at it. That's a pretty cool connect, cl clean connection. Uh, sometimes it might be dull. If it's dull and not shiny, then it, I think that's called a cold solder and it's not as effective. I think that's pretty bomber. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is have solder cross into another pin. Those things need to be separated by that insulative property. Otherwise, you're gonna, you know, your things aren't going to work. All right, let's let you guys give it a shot. Okay, now we're going to see how Nick does here. Luke, why don't you put on some safety goggles as well? Yeah, see, swapped. That's good. You swapped the uh, orientation of it to, to pay attention to your dominant hand. You need to clean the tip. Or... You could. It does look like it's a little dull. Just, just you run it through the the uh, steel wool and see if that makes it shiny. Yeah. And if it's not melting, you could give this, oh, it looks like it melted. It's the solder stuck on there, huh? That's normal. If you just apply a little heat to it, it'll pull it off. There, it looks like you got that peak. Can you tell? I'm sure your vision's better yeah, than mine. I think so, yeah. You've got a, a, like a little peak surrounded, what surrounding happened, it. What happens if you connect them accidentally? Yeah, so the question is, what happens if you connect these two pins together? Well, it's basically going to be like a, it's going to close a circuit between two pins. So if you, it's looking for that voltage, right? And a connection between a voltage and a ground. So it's like a button. You're going to connect a button to one of these. So if you have the two pins connected, then closing the connection, the circuit on one will close the circuit on the other and it will trigger both. So you can't, you won't be able to distinguish between the two in your, in the way you have this thing uh, set up. So this little soundboard, it can function by itself, uh, but we're going to connect it to an Arduino in or, so that we can do more than just the piezo speaker sounds. All right, let's take a look at this one. I like how you have your your rest your wrist resting on the vice there. That's good.